Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, I had planned to do a nice little video on some maintenance jobs on the peaches here in the greenhouse. Having looked at them, they are a bit of a mess and I can't show you exactly what I wanted to do. The truth is, I should have done this job weeks ago. So with the peaches, obviously the first thing we see in the spring are the blossoms and okay, I came in with the paintbrush and pollinated and we had good fruit set. Also, towards the end of the flowering period, then you've got the shoots there. I mean, it does vary from variety to variety. So the other variety we've got in here, you have to wait a little bit longer before those shoots are a sensible size. But, but on this one here, the shoots are ready to pinch out towards the end of the flowering period. So I came in and I did that. So almost every shoot on the tree is removed in that process. I only leave, I'm only supposed to leave, shoots at the tips of the fruiting wood. They're gonna grow on and keep that branch happy. And then I leave some, one or two near the base of the fruiting wood that are gonna develop into replacements for next year because the peach will only fruit on that one year old wood. So I'm only leaving shoots at the ends and at the bases of the fruiting wood to be replacements. That's fine, but after some weeks, um, there will be some shoots that have come out after that process, some that I've missed, and I should have come through and pulled off anything that I've missed, and also, the new shoots, they need to be pinched back. So let me just show you one branch. I'll show you what I mean. So this branch, I'm not going to keep at all. I was only keeping it on the off chance that it would give me some fruit, but nothing is set on this branch. It only had a couple of flowers. So I'm going to cut the whole thing off. But let's use this as an example. Well, I've got these shoots coming off the side here. I don't, I don't need those. In fact, I've just broken that one off. That's fine. I'm going to cut this branch out at the base. But all of this is new growth. And I only need these shoots to be about that long. So earlier in the year, I should have stopped when they, when they were this size and come along and, and just pinch the tips out like that. And that's what I should have done. And then, of course, there'll be secondary growth. Just come through and pull those shoots out as well. And that's all you need to leave at the ends of the fruiting wood. And then the only other branches I should have are those near the base. Oh, I will be leaving the bottom of this branch on there because there is one very juicy peach down there. So that, that's one of the tasks I was to look at in this video. And obviously that's something I still have to do. Well, this is not a happy shoot. That's not a happy piece of wood at all. That has died so obviously I'll cut that back um, that doesn't look happy at all so I'll cut that back I'll probably leave this shoot on but I will pinch that back to five or six leaves that's fine the other job was to come through and thin out these fruitlets but you can see that the tree has already decided which ones it likes and which it doesn't so uh, there's no point having that one there because this fruit is much better. So what I would normally do, and I have done a video on this, is come along, you can see I've got a lot of shoots here that, that obviously weren't out when I thinned out this branch. So the, these have all come out since I, since I removed the shoots from this tree. So I've got to go through and remove all of these. They're not wanted. What I would normally do is look at these and see which of these are the best placed. So that one at the back, for example, is not, is not well placed. And I would come through and, and just pull out those that I want to keep. The tree's already made some pretty good decisions. These are very nice fruits. That one's useless. It's in the wrong, it's too close to this one, in the wrong place. And I'll probably remove all of these others now. And those will be my chosen fruits. Not chosen by me, but chosen by the tree it's going to shed a lot of those so ordinarily that's a job that I like to do I like to come through and I pick the pick those 
fruits that, that look best, that are best placed on those branches, so they're well exposed to the sun, for example, and then I space them out so there aren't too many on those branches and, and so on. If you leave the tree to its own devices, it will naturally shed quite a lot of the fruit. If, it, if like this, this year, there's been good fruit set. Now I should have done that, and I should have done that a few weeks ago, so that's a bit naughty. Um, but I've got a bigger problem. So those were the two little maintenance jobs, just pinching out the excess shoots and removing anything that I'd missed when I first did it and then filling those fruitlets. Both of those jobs are a bit of a mess now because I've left it too late. But the other thing that's a mess and it's had a huge effect on this tree. I've never seen this tree looking quite so sad we've got a lot of scale insect and I should have dealt with that a little bit earlier. Now, scale is very common, especially under cover. We, I think pretty much we always have a little bit of scale on the vines and then we often have a fair bit of scale on the peaches, especially this one. Very often it's not so much that I care. When I come along, I, I see some, I will rub them off it's a bit icky, but I'll, I'll rub them off the branches when I see them, and, and, and that's fine. And a small amount of scale, it doesn't cause too much trouble. But when there's a large quantity of the blighters, obviously they're, they're sap suckers, that's not good. But also they're, they're exuding sticky gunk, which is then encouraging molds to develop and, and the whole thing turns into a, a mess and that has happened. And it's, it's there in such huge quantity that I need to deal with it and in fact I should have dealt with it a couple of weeks ago. Again, not good gardening but I'm going to deal with it today. Um, now like I say, normally I don't worry too much. Most of the time the, the scale is it's on the older branches that I'm going to prune out after fruiting anyway. So if there's a, there's a few of them left behind, I don't worry too much about it. When I see a, a large cluster, I just rub them off. And normally that's enough maintenance. This time, I am going to physically remove them, but I'm also going to give them a spray. Now, I was actually first alerted to this by the ants. And ant, ants, I don't worry about ants, generally speaking, in the garden. They can be a problem. If they, if they start building their nest in and around the root system of a plant, or, or worse, in, in one of your pots, then they can wreak havoc on it. So you can lose your plant. Um, so at that point, the ants are a bit of a nightmare. But by and large, we don't get too much trouble. Every now and then, for example, in the where we're growing the chilies in, in pots, every now and then they'll try and take over one pot and that's annoying, but they're not usually too much trouble. They are a very good indication of whether you've got a pest problem on your tree though, because if you've got aphids or scale insect, the ants will be taking advantage of them and they'll be running all over the tree. and. It's not a bad idea to just glance at the trunk or, or some of the main branches and just have a look because if you see a lot of ants running up and down, there's a sure sign that you've got some pest problem. Let me see if I can show you. Um, the apricot behind me is also affected. The foliage on here is generally looking okay, but we have got some nasty sooty molds developing and, and I've got to get rid of them. So I'm sure this will show up on the camera, these sooty molds on the, on the leaves here. And this is really not good. These leaves are suffering. In fact, the whole shoot is covered in it. And that, that needs to be got rid of. Um, I don't know if the scale is going to show up, but the ants are running up and down here. They're running up and down the greenhouse frame. And they're all over these branches. There's a whole army of them working them. And sure enough, there's a ton of scale in here. So I'll move the camera closer. Um, apologies if it doesn't 
focus well or if it doesn't show up it's always a little bit tricky trying to get some close-ups with this camera so I'll see if I can show you some of that scale in there so um, this branch here is absolutely covered with the scale insect all the way along now you can just come along and rub them off and give them a bit of a squish and the, I mean that's if you do it regularly sort of every time you come in the greenhouse and you spot a few if you do it regularly it's a it's a sufficient means of maintaining the plants you'll miss a few but it's 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 not that big a deal they're only a problem when they're in large quantities but when they're when they are there in numbers then it's not good and you maybe see that scales going all the way up this branch there's tons of it there's little ones on on here it's yeah i mean it's not a nice job they gunky nasty things um but we've got to get rid of them because this sort of damage is very typical you you get something similar when there's a, a lot of aphid around they these insects which are effectively farmed by the ants there's a load there's a load here um they exude this sticky substance and then that encourages the moles to develop or you can see on the trunk here this is this is showing signs of it horrible now on the peach this can be uh, quite devastating in quantity so you can see them all the way along this branch and and this this entire branch is covered and uh, these these peaches should be much bigger so this is having a bad effect on this branch i think this whole branch is a bit rubbish to be honest and i will probably just cut it out um that when they start to yellow a little bit and maybe you can see there's a hint of yet yellow to that when that happens they're, they're basically done for see they're just falling off well that one might that one might remain it's a little bit better there but they have been badly affected by the scale and, and as a consequence we've lost a lot of fruit I mean we had tons on here and it, it's my own fault for not looking after it but when you're busy with other stuff um, these things can happen but there's just a ton of scale on here what I'll probably do is I'll have a look and see how much potential fruit there is but if there's very little on the worst affected branches I'm just going to cut the entire branch out back to a new shoot and that will remove a large portion of the scale now for the rest of it if I want to keep this branch I'm going to go through and rub finish rubbing these off then I'm going to give them a little bit of a squirt and I've just got a spray gun I've just got a sprayer here with some soft soap sort of a horticultural soap that's no good for anything but you can give it a little bit of a spray with the soft soap wipe it down that's going to help remove some of that that junk um, it wouldn't be bad to to hose the whole thing down after that but i need to go through and give this good going over try and remove as much of that mold and the sticky junk obviously these these fruits aren't good for anything so like i say this branch almost certainly i'll have a look along the whole length but almost certainly i'll cut this out the only half decent fruits left on it are all facing away so they're not well placed you can see just how much soot there is on on here and this has all happened this year uh, after flowering it looked absolutely magnificent every branch was laden with young fruitlets and it's a real pity that i did not get on with this job sooner well i do feel a bit of a chump the other peach tree is in a much better state don't know why maybe it's this one this one is early rivers and it always the, the other is a, a late peach so 
this one always starts in the growth earlier. If we have any red spider mite, this one's always much more affected than, than the other, that's Belgard. I think that one has got plenty of scale on it as well, but it doesn't seem to have affected the, the branches and the, the, the fruit on it. Nothing like the extent of damage on here. So I'm gonna to have to get on and treat this tree. I'm gonna cut out some of the affected wood. I'm going to rub the scale off the rest of it and see what I can do to tidy it up. The young branches that have just been growing this, this year, they're either entirely free of the scale insect or then there's very little. So it's not a long-term problem, it's just a short-term problem that I've got to deal with because these gnarly branches, they're gonna be cut out at the end of this season, whatever happens. It's just that I'm gonna cut some of them out now. And of course, I have lost some fruit. So it is really important not to let your tree turn into this sort of mess. I would much prefer to do this video at the right time of year and show you how it should be maintained properly. But in this video, all I can do is show you the mess that is left if you just let it go for a few weeks. So that is that is my fault entirely. I can still see that there's some there's some decent fruit left. So it's not it's not a complete write off, but it's not good. So I will get on with that. On the apricot, it's a slightly different job because um, that wood is largely permanent. Or I say permanent. Let's say semi-permanent because on a tree like this, you can always cut back old wood and uh, and replace it with, with younger, more productive wood. But on the apricot, it's gonna be fruiting on the older wood. So any branches that are affected there, it's not that they're gonna be pruned out towards the end of the season, they, they're gonna remain. So what I need to do is um, clear it off of all of that. But the first job I think will be to prune some of this stuff. So um, we've got, We've got new growth, this is, this is all new growth and that's lovely. And I, I did a video about pruning apricots as well, so I won't repeat all of that information here, but essentially what I'll look at with this new growth is whether that can be tied in. This one could be in a sensible place. It's, it's not a bad branch. It's not too vigorous. I never like overly vigorous wood. It's much better if you've got some thinner, less vigorous stuff, it tends to be much more productive. Just like with the peaches, the new growth is free of the scale insect, so I don't need to worry about that, but I need to pick which ones of these are going to remain and leave them alone. Those that aren't, I need to shorten them because you, I don't need all this growth. So you take those back to, let's say, half a dozen leaves now and maybe the other end of the summer, you'd take them back to, to just three leaves. It's a little bit like the spur pruning you might do on an apple or a pear, but you've, you, you've got to prune these ideally after bud break through to the end of summer. You don't do any winter pruning on, on the stone fruits. And of course, there's a lot of growth going up vertical. I mean, this, this entire branch is new this year. It, it's remarkable how much they will put on and I've got to cut back a lot of this and tidy it up. I can then tie back in these new branches and at the same time, go over it, remove the scale, give it a bit of squirt from the soft soap. Now I don't tend to use anything else in the garden really, apart from uh, a jet from the hose and the soft soap from the um, little spray there. So quite, quite benign. The scale insect, you could treat that with one of the organic sprays. Oh, I think something based on pyrethrins will deal with them as well. So that you could do if you've got a real problem with it, but I'm just gonna to stick to manually removing them and then a spray of the soft soap. And hopefully that should clear all this mess up. Um, it's a, unfortunate that I've lost fruit on this one peach, but. That's something I should, 
I should learn from, I mean, it's, it's not that I don't know it, it's, um, it's that I didn't get around to, to doing it. And it's, it's funny, you can see a bit of scale and, and just ignore it and, it and it's fine. I mean, I've, I've been rubbing it off of the vines recently because I came through and I pruned, pruned these vines back and uh, removed the excess bunches. I've only got one bunch on each of these stems here now. And there's often a little bit of scale around the base of those shoots. Not on the new growth, this is completely free again, but, but on the old spurs. And I've rub rubbed it off from there, but, but I hadn't done it from, from these peaches. And yeah, very quickly it gets out of hand. I think they like this warm weather we're having. They are multiplying at quite a rate. But anyway, I shall, I shall set about some population control um, and get this job done. But anyway, that's it really for this video. I just wanted to show a couple of maintenance tasks that need to be tackled and um, what happens when you don't do it. So, thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.